Hi, my name is Jess Walton. And today on The Young and the Restless, we're going to do something just a little bit different. We've gathered some friends and some family, and we're going to reminisce and celebrate the incredible life that belonged to our dear friend Jeannie Cooper, who, as you may know, passed away on May the 8th at the age of 84. For 40 years, she played Catherine Chancellor, and this was her set. This was the Chancellor living room where she bedeviled me. <laughs> She was an amazing, amazing woman. She was a powerful actress and inventive and brave. She was a very loving mother, loving grandmother. She was part warrior, part rabble rouser, large part diva, and a part truck driver, all wrapped up in one great dame. Now, in a few months, the passing of Catherine Chancellor will be addressed on the show because it's going to impact hugely on all of the characters. And we look forward to telling you those stories. But for now, we would love you to join us as we take a moment to laugh and to cry and to give thanks for the blessing it was to have known and loved Jeannie Cooper. My first line was, would you mind taking my fur, please? And John Convoy looked up from the table. He said, thank God, now I can hear what this show is all about. It's yours. All yours. The house, the grounds, everything. What else do you want, Philip? What else do you want? Oh, I know, I know. You, you want me out of your life. It's the toughest, toughest media I have ever, ever attempted. Oh, Catherine, if you weren't a drunk, an alcoholic, I would suggest a toast. Oh, it's all right. I wouldn't have toasted with you. And that started the battle of Jill and Catherine. Forty years of hate, love, indifference. He used you like a common whore. You are pathetic! <laughs> Yes, Walter. She is so marvelous. We've worked so hard to establish our relationship as Jill and Catherine. I've had so many different storylines. Welcome to my intervention party. Free drinks for everyone. Come on. Um, the facelift for one. Well, was it worth it? Ah, oh, yes, definitely. I cannot tell you the impact that that's had on people. I stand victorious in this. Victor would be nowhere without me. You have to find a way to go on. You just let it be, Heather. My God, Victor, life is... Life is for the living. He will always be my Victor victorious. Uh, he will always have my back. She has seemed like the natural daughter. Can't you see how hard this is for her? How does a mother steal a baby from her own child? She's had enough. Stop! Mel and I work very well together. We're best friends. Kate Lander, the iconic maid. You are truly a wonderful woman. Marge was one of the freest characters ever, and I loved it. Damn. He looks like we was bored out of the same bottle of ketchup. I was playing Marge. You're gonna take my place. I was playing Marge playing Catherine. Yo, Marge, I'm Catherine. And I was playing Catherine. Well, you have to sober at large. Well, I think you'd be more fun than this. That is what entertainment's all about. That's what daytime is all about. To get you involved. In 40 years, I've spent half of my lifetime with the young and the restless. But I know a lot of people who have spent their lifetimes right along with me. That makes me very proud. Very proud.
On behalf of my sister Karen and my brother Colin and our entire family, we wanted to take a moment to give a, a, a heartfelt thank you to everybody here at The Young and the Restless for inviting our mother, Jean Cooper, into your family for the last 40 years. You know, family meant everything. As anybody who knows her meant everything to her. Love of family, love and family meant everything to her. And certainly it started with us, the three of us, and extended to her eight grandchildren. And after that, it was her young and restless family, past, present, and I'm certain somehow she will be on this set in these halls for a long time to come. So her future young and restless family. We know that she loved working with young actors, mentoring them, tormenting them. And she loved the relationships that she's had here for the last 40 years with some of the actors and certainly people involved with the show. I know we'd be remiss if we didn't thank the Bell family for the invention of Mrs. Chancellor. It gave my mom a life, really, outside of us. It gave her a life that meant everything in the world to her. And it allowed her to do something more importantly, and that is reach out to all of you, her fans. At times, even as her children, you wondered, <laughs> I think she loved you as much as she loved us. And she loved touching your lives and she loved the love that you gave back to her. We felt it this week in your wonderful, wonderful outpouring of love and remarks to us about her passing. And you should know that she loves you. All of this was for you. So we thank you. And uh, we certainly hope you enjoy this wonderful tribute to uh, our great mother, a wonderful actress and Mrs. Chancellor, mom. The Young and the Restless. This portion is sponsored by... I started The Young and the Restless around 1982, and I was one of the dozens of young actors and actresses that Miss Cooper took under her wing. I started on the show so young, and, you know, it's so intimidating what we do if you're not used to it, and it's so fast, and, boy, I, like, it was, she was one of the first people I met, and she just completely took me under her wing and supported me and made me feel like I could do this. She did it in such a way where she wasn't telling you anything. Yeah. You, just, you almost got it subliminally yeah. where it wasn't it wasn't a lesson or it wasn't now you listen young man it was it was almost by osmosis. Yeah. Did just you being around her. Just live for Oh I, and yeah. I was just going to say when I was in the courtroom and I know she'd be sitting behind me and I'd have a five page you know monologue and and she'd be there and she'd be reading and she'd be very quiet and then at the end when the time was right she'd look you in the eye and go and and that said it all first started the show i was 20 really whatever and she walks up to me and stroked my face and goes she was like kind of petting me and she goes listen you're gonna get a lot of girls <laughs> and, I, and i said i went wow thanks and then she stopped petting me and squeezed my face and said don't be stupid. <laughs> Phyllis was getting married to Danny Romilotti. I was having a hard time crying in a mm -hmm. scene. And I couldn't do it. I just, like, I couldn't do it at all. And she said, come here, come here. <laughs> and she took me, <laughs> she took me backstage. And this was, she, she looked at me, she held my hand, she, and then she let go. She went, everyone hates you. No one likes you. Everyone despises you. What method is that? I keep seeing the jewelry on, on Michelle's knee, and she was famous for her jewelry. And I, I always love seeing that hand yeah. there while, while she was talking and showing the ring. rings on it. I know. The three, yeah. three of us worked right. together, and the chemistry. And we love those comedy scenes. We love those yeah. comedy yeah. scenes. And yeah. then Esther protects Mrs. C. Yes. Uh, Esther was the first one to call her Mrs. C. So protects yeah. her. No matter what, no matter what Jill does. Jill, this has gone quite far enough. <laughs> Catherine, he will get used to you. But you know what? You have to smile because animals can sense fear in a person. I have always been afraid of dogs. Now, I told you that. I was severely, severely bitten when I was a child. Now, you knew that. Did I? 
And the cat fight was in the attic, and we decided that our doubles, our stunt doubles, were not doing a very good job and not making a very good show of it. So we said, we'll do it. Mm. And we did it. And this was only like 10 years ago, and every cat fight I had with her, it was like, oh, I've got to be so careful of her. And no, she was tough as nails. I mean, we went over on a sofa up in the attic, us, like just tipped over. It was, it was pretty amazing. They were really fun. The two of you had yeah. the most amazing scenes together. She had dynamic. such a dynamic that amazing chemistry. chemistry. It was thrilling. It was it seemed so spontaneous. It didn't seem scripted at all. It wasn't. We just had fun. That's yeah. what she was yeah. about. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. The when I look really, in my mind, that's yeah. what she was about. I didn't really get to have a, a real my first one on one scene with her, you know, for nine years. Um, until we started our first and really only storyline together. I'm finding out that her finding out I was a grandson. I didn't know you knew how to sign. I didn't. I learned because I wanted to talk to my grandson. Welcoming me and not only to the, the Chancellor family, but just to the young and the restless family for my first day. I'm yeah. the warmest person yeah. that, I, uh, that I've, I've come across. It was exactly that. She just had a special place for everyone. I brought this out. What is that? Those of you who frequent my dressing room have seen it on the wall for 20 years. Um, mm. This is a great shot of us. It, it's shot. my favorite because we are That's both having so much fun. <laughs> um, and I, it was taken the day that she got her star on the Walk of Fame. You know, I, I had a conversation with her. Uh, the day after she won her Emmy for lead actress. And I said, so how does it feel? It was just amazing when they announced my name. I thought, that's how the name Jean sounds. Because they've been called Catherine, Mrs. Chancellor, and numerous other names over the years. But uh, that was, it was exciting. I was having trouble crying one day, and she said, here's what you do. You pretend you're like this doorknob. And she pointed to the doorknob in her dressing room, and she became the doorknob. And she said, I'm just sitting here every day, and everybody's walking along, and they're touching me, and they're yanking me, and they're pushing me. And she became the doorknob. And I thought, that's what makes her such a good actress. She could put herself inside of everybody. There was a scene giving birth to you on the stairs. Oh, that's right. right so, stairs. so many things have happened on those wow. stairs. I know. And I was in the middle of the storm, and, and Mrs. Chancellor uh, helped deliver little Kate, who is now Chloe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They were fantastic yeah. scenes. This baby, now think, this baby cannot be born now. Well, it's fine to tell me, Mrs. Chancellor, but it was going to tell the baby. Oh, well, where did the name Duchess come from? Did you, oh, did you start that, or did they write that? Or? Bill. 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 Come on, Duchess. Come on. Uh. Come on back to me. <laughs> and I hope she's with my dad and, oh, you yeah. know, a lot of our friends. Yeah. And that, that's the other connection that the, the two of them, they had um, a pretty complex relationship. I mentioned that that this this Bell family was in Chicago and and how they knew about uh, Hollywood. It's a great loss for this show to have to have lost her because her feet were back in the history of L.A., as you say, in the history of Hollywood. And for her to plant her feet here and bring that experience and that that gem of, of reality to this show and to what it is to be on a show like this. Stop asking why That's when I'll stop You're
Don't waste your sympathy on me, Mr. Newman. Whatever I went through with Derek was my own doing. And if he took advantage of my weakness, it was because I let him. Love makes us do strange things, doesn't it? No, Mr. Newman. We do strange things and we call it love. I love Jeannie. Loved working with her. I remember her smiling, you know? When I think of her, I think of her smiling. We always had laughs when we did a scene together. Never failed. And what I admire most about her is that at the age of 80 whatever, she knew her lines. First time, first take, maybe two takes. But we always had laughs. Everybody, no matter what the scene was about, or if you were in a bad mood, or if you were <laughs> tired, we always ended up laughing right. during the rehearsals, sometimes during take. <laughs> <laughs> My most vivid memory of her was when I first met her also, and it was in the audition. I was told by my agent, you're going to go read for Young and the Rest, you're going to read with Jeannie Cooper. And my agent warned me, he said, you'll get the part if the chemistry is right. And I hadn't looked at my chemistry set in a long time. <laughs> So I walked into the conference room, and there were all these people, and and I was very nervous because it's just kind of intimidating just knowing about her beforehand. And she was at the end of the conference table with the pages in her hand, and I came in with the pen. I was kind of nervous, and, and she knew I was nervous, and she looked at me, and she introduced herself, and she just waved at the other people and said, don't worry about them. Just have fun. What are you waiting for, man? Kiss your bride. My most wonderful memories with her, there are so many to choose from, but it would be my very first scene with her. Mrs. Chancellor, you would not be the only investor. Ah, Ma, you are persistent. You have heard of the Abbots. Well, they are investing too. Oh, my, you are a carbon copy of young Catherine Chancellor. Thank you. And my very last scene with her. Oh, come on, I know this is something you don't want to hear. I know it, and I'm sorry. I wish I could say something you would like to hear. I know. It's not what I want to hear, but you know what? I always appreciate your honesty. Oh, God. Thank you. <laughs> now, I'm, uh, I'm going to go check on my son. Okay. She was a grand dame the first day she arrived, and I think that what she brought to this new little soap opera, what she brought to Bill and Lee Bell and what she brought to the writers and, and everyone else was a fully realized character. And she was a character. The charisma, the energy, the yeah. vitality. Every time I looked at her, like you said, Josh, there was this incredible sparkle and magical look in her eyes, her aura, her presence unlike anything I've ever witnessed. She was the diva, she was mm -hmm. this show, and she taught all of us mm -hmm. by her example. She yeah. was able to focus and know who you were yeah. and tune into who you were and make you special. I really am grateful for everything, Mother. She seemed to feel very, very connected to people who were lost and wanting to help them, which I thought was a really beautiful thing and says, and was really, it was really so much of who she was. So I, you know, strolled onto the set and I'm, I'm in my script and I'm like, the, and it's time to do it and time to meet Jane. And so I put out my hand and made eye contact like my father always taught me to do when you meet somebody. And she looked at me, um, and, and everyone's got the story, so it's it's not unusual. But she, 
she uh, just targeted me, and I knew at that moment that uh, there was nothing I could say or do to convince this woman that I wasn't exactly who I am. And she demanded it of me at all times. We had a scene um, about two years ago, I think it was, where uh, Kevin had been kidnapped and he finally um, comes back to town and uh, we're here in the Chancellor living room and I'm thanking her for being so supportive and for not giving up on me. And she has a, a monologue where she just talks about how how much she cared about me and what a special friend she thought I was. And uh, I didn't have a line back to her, but when she was done, I just looked at her and I said, I love you too. And it, I wasn't acting. It was just what I felt like saying at that moment. I wouldn't wear a t-shirt like this for just anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too. Well, it's been a very long day. I'll see you in the morning, I hope. Sounds good. <laughs> love you too, young man. Mm. She always, no. you know, has Sweet. names for people, too. I mean, I called her Jeannie Jean. I called her Janina. Yeah, you called her Janina? Yeah. Called her Jeannie Jean. She called me Kathy Kate. And she called me yeah. Little Hell. <laughs> <laughs> Every day. Uh, didn't get Elizabeth. Didn't get Lizzie. I had no Just idea her name hell. was Jean for, for the longest time. She said, she's Jean, and I started friend. calling her Jean. She said, you call me Jeannie, don't you? I said, yes, I do. <laughs> I couldn't call her anything but Jeannie. She got mad at me when I'd say, listen, man, thank you so much. It's means so much, man. I'd be in a hotel or something. It just wouldn't be. And I got to be with her. Did you call her man? I did probably <laughs> call her man. Well, hey, man, I did call her what man. What did we call her? We called her Jeannie. We called her Beanie. We yeah. called her Jean. Beaner. Jean was, Jean was. Bean. <laughs> I mean, here's someone we all respected so much. And we would, I would look over at her and say, hey, Beanie. And she would turn. I, I mean, how, how great is that? Call Beanie was one of mine for her, too. Yeah, everyone had cute nicknames. She just called me a little. And I remember the first time I met her, she was so warm and so accommodating, so generous. There was nothing that you could not talk to her about. Everybody here had this feeling that they had a special place in her heart. Yeah. You know, that they had some special connection. Everyone felt that. Yeah. That was her in New Orleans. Uh -huh. And I was, you know, I wanted to hit the town and go out. I was like, and we had this big dinner and I was like, let's just order dinner so I can get out of here. And we ended up sitting there for two hours listening to her talk about Hollywood oh, and her yeah. life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was riveting. And she gave more to fans than anyone I've ever met. We all think we're kind of a big deal. Right. Fans love this woman. Right. Well, I, I love how she always says, her famous line at fan events is always to say, there is no star of the show. Uh -huh. The star of the show is the show. Right. But she was wrong, because yeah. she was absolutely the star. Back in the early 90s, when I first started doing appearances for Young and the Restless, I was going to the Deep South. And it was interesting to see the reaction that I would be signing an autograph, but they would talk all about, yeah. so how is Mrs. C? Yeah. And how is, how is her life? Well, what do you guys, what's your relationship like? Yeah. I, I, can't, I can't remember a single time when I wasn't asked about Jeannie Cooper. Yeah. She'd be so happy that we're here oh, and yeah, that yeah. we're doing this and celebrating mm -hmm. this. And celebrating. Yeah, you should be doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Every other year we have the fan club that people come from far and near. And during that week, if you stopped into Jeannie's room to run lines with her, there were eight people in her room. Here I thought I had the most special relationship with her, yeah. and I come to find thousands of people <laughs> have had the exact same yeah. experience and how extraordinary that one person can yeah. make each one of us feel like yeah. the most special person. If you were doing lines in her room with her and the door knocked and it was a fan, everything stopped. Yep. She would never make anybody feel slighted or that they weren't important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She was a friend to me. And to all of us, you know, and she had that thing that did that. But, you know, she was wonderful to be around. Well, it's that humanity that she has. You know, she, she co-founded a, a drug rehabilitation center in Midlands, Texas. She raised the money. She, that's, a, that's a wonderful gift to make everyone feel they have a special place in her heart. Yep. Well, every member of the crew on this stage, when Jeannie would walk on, no matter who she was with in the scene with her, they'd know they were in for a good time. Where every time Jeannie would leave the set, every day here, good night, everyone. <laughs> and every night, good night, Jeannie. Get it.
through Y&R, uh, I, I have I have that secondary family. It's very secure. It's very it's very sweet feeling. I have a CBS family, which I you know it's uh, people that you knew all those years ago and watched them grow and rank. It's incredible. You know, it's uh, you're, I'm very fortunate. I'm very very fortunate. Chapter 8, co-stars <laughs> and other playmates. Apparently, it's been widely publicized that I've developed a reputation on the YNR set, particularly amongst the younger male members of the cast, such as Greg Rickhart, Josh Morrow, Billy Miller, and Michael Grazaday, that I am a serial pincher, that no butt or groin area is safe during a scene with me, as exhibited by your uh, yes. square dance. I really thought that we had a very unique and special relationship, me and Jeannie. Um, my favorite scene ever was we were doing a square dancing scene and we went every time we went round the corner or whatever the jargon is for for square dancing she would uh you know grab my uh groin and i thought it was i thought it was unique no to us i think it's a it's a term of endearment if you've been goosed yes. by genie it means you're a member of the club yeah have you ever been goosed by genie well, cooper I mean, yeah. listen, yeah. at least once or twice. I never really knew about the constant ass grabbing. <laughs> so I feel a little like, I think it was gender related, perhaps. <laughs> I, I don't know. She was always a, well. a, a, a presence in my life. My, uh, uh, some of you know that my wife had a very uh, arduous labor and it was uh, 38 hours. And I came out of the operating room and um, I saw my mom and right next to my mom, was Jean with flowers and I don't know how she knew it was two and a half days later from when we went in God. it was uh, been there and, for two days you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, all done. And, it, and, and she just showed up always at those at the at the right mm -hmm. time and and in a in a just a big loving way I mean it was it, it, you just felt so comfortable when you're in her presence I came home from Mexico and got sick and she called me in the hospital i was like how'd you even know where i was <laughs> I, I mean i called in sick from work i was like uh, and she called me in my hospital room that work was very cordial we're a lot of fun she will bring the life and she'll cuss and make everybody happy and, and, and very accommodating but i i got sick at one point she found out about it and i couldn't kick this thing and she knew that i was you know single by myself and i'm it's a weekend and i'm staying home and i get this phone call there's this gravelly old voice bill are you in bed? <laughs> and she called me three days straight to make sure that A, I wasn't stupid, B, I was taken care of, and to make sure that if I needed anything, she would take care of it. And ever since then, if there was ever a problem personally, you'd get a, I'd get a bill. Come to my room and talk to me for a minute. And uh, she epitomized the term grandma. She's our mom. She's our grandma. She's our nana. She was everything that... I think uh, I look up to. She would not want anyone to be maudlin or sad and, and, and think of the sadness. She would want everyone to say what a great life she had. I'd celebrate what, her. How many people she touched, how many millions of people, that, the lives she changed. And she would want everyone, whether they worked with her personally or only ever watched her on the show, to celebrate that and take that love and move forward and, and laugh and love. Truly, a so, celebration of her life. And that's what this is about right Absolutely. now. There's a celebration of the magnificence of that lady. Jeannie, we will miss you forever. Every day. What a champ. Yeah. Truly a champ. You always knew that, that, that she was in your corner. She was such a force of nature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I actually fell in love with her. <laughs> there was a heart in that woman that was special. There was an insecurity and a security about her. There's a beautiful balance in her. Her love for, for all of us and for the viewers. Yeah. And the fans was so important. She taught me so much from day one. Whenever you went into her dressing room or her home, mm -hmm. there was always magic going on because she was there. And she set the tone for this for this whole show. I'm really lucky that I got to spend so much time with her this last few years, too. Thank you, Jeannie, for the magic. Mm -hmm. And she was. She was magic. I'm so grateful yeah. that I got to know and love her. The show was new. It was half an hour. It was live on tape. Everyone was kind of going, uh, oh just learning what to do 
And she knew on the first day what to do. She would do surprising, spontaneous, amazingly generous things. Right. People who um, are trying to make something of their life touched her. What a generous woman. Talk about a great life. You love your job. You love being at home. We are so much richer for having had her. She kind of raised all of us, no matter how old you were. She had the mouth of a swarthy sailor. Yes. <laughs> However, she was very elegant and eloquent most of the time. And she embraced every single person as if they were family. Very nice lady. She was very welcoming. She was, she's quick to give you a compliment. She's also quick to tell you if you're doing something wrong. If there's a heaven, you know, she's up there telling stories. Great lady. Uh, yeah. yeah. Great lady. I owe a lot to daytime television. Realizing the impact that daytime has on people, far more, far more than the film, because you're in their lives every single day. Philip, the reason I tried to reach you, I didn't know what I was signing. Now you know that, Philip, I mean, those papers for the divorce. So there's a big difference between me 36 years ago and today. And I sort of help say it's okay to be over 50. I, I help say it's okay to have a nip and a tuck here and there if you need, what have you. How do I tease my audience? How do I tease you today? You think I'm gonna do it this way, but I'm not, and we do it another way. You asking me if I live alone? Honey, let's go to your place because mine is a mess. It's the old thing of head up, suck in your gut, stick out your boobs, and act. Hey, I'm being molested here. I'm Excuse being molested me. here. But will you just shut up and let me do it? What in the hell kind of game are you playing? Full steam ahead, Neil. Full, full steam ahead. It's me, Joe. I'm home. You better be prepared. Offer the most that you can give, that you know of. If you're fortunate, you get a good director who will bring more out of you. But make sure that you have it to give. And those who are no longer with us in the flesh, they're still with us right here. Why is it you always know the right thing to say? Because that's exactly how I feel. I think I'd like to be remembered as someone who, um, who loved doing what she does or did. I, I was so fortunate to have the storyline with her towards the, the last, you know, parts of her. Uh, last few weeks of her life where I got to take care of her and the last scene we had in here with Jesse was here for it and Jeannie walked upstairs and she goes good night and she left and it was an ad lib which I thought was it was so touching at the time because of the situation and for that to be her exit with Jesse was really special too. It's beautiful. What I want or what I need is for someone to think like I do sitting in that chair. And I'm far too conservative. Hmm. You're like a glacier. Yes, like the dinosaur I am. You deal with it. Well, from what you're saying, I don't have any choice, do I? Are you going to work with Kane, or... Um, you going to fight me on this all the way? Go up to bed and get some rest, okay? Ah, 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 ah. Good. <laughs> Do you want me to help you up the stairs? <clears throat> I 
I believe I can manage. Thank you, though. Good night. Chief.